Hey everyone! That's called Maka Stat Gamer, and this is Collat. And I've got a few things to explain about this game. I've actually been following this game since late 2014. Um, however, though, I'm actually playing it several months after it's come out. This game got a bit of popularity for a while, which I'm happy, which is actually part of the reason why I put off playing it, because I'm a goddamn hipster. Uh, but anyways, though, um, when I was following it, initially I was interested because it was a very pretty looking game that was set in the Collat Mountains. I don't know, I just said Collat Mountains. The mountains, whatever they're called, where some people went missing after they went hiking into the forest. It was never figured out what happened to them. It's been a source of some horror stories and all that because there's strange traces of radiation up there in those mountains. So some people might think it's something to do with radiation. Maybe it was a government testing site. Some people believe something supernatural happened. There's been all sorts of stories about the area and the strange appearances of these people that were just never found. But yeah, I am. Actually, correction, some were not found, some were found, but they were dead from strange means. Um, talking about th means that didn't really make much sense, but... Anyways, the first is somebody died of a fire. Apparently, that's what it looked like, even though there was no signs of a fire anywhere nearby. Now, talking about that, um, this game also caught my attention again, because I know that there is a song in the game composed by Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, who is the person who does the vocal songs for the Silent Hill games until a certain point in the series, but regardless. She's a good singer. Um, I also know, of course, the main character is voiced by the guy who played one of the roles in the Lord of the Ring films. I cannot remember his name or the actor's name for the life of me, but I'm sure some people here know what it is, and we'll talk more about that. So basically what there is to say is that for an indie effort, they uh, got some bigger talent on their side. Maybe it's because of that that I got some attention. I actually, outside of all I just said, I know very little. So, yeah. All I know is I was following the game for a while. I put off playing it, and then a lot of other people played it, so I put off playing it even more. Um, I know that the voice actor thing... Yeah, I guess his name is Sheen Bean. Or Sean Bean, or however you say it. Uh, regardless, though, and Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, etc., etc. Let's move, I guess, straight into Collat, then. New game. The place where you collected the note will be marked on the map. Okay, that's fine. Let's go straight into the snowy fields. After we let itself load. I think this is an Unreal Engine 4 game. I might be mistaken about that. But we'll find out, I guess. 56 years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains. A group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Ototan Mountain. Their journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace, and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force, similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. 
Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen, from an avalanche, or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered, deep under the snow. Well, here we are. I need to adjust a few things before we really get into this. My sensitivity is maybe a bit strong for me. Look, sensitivity. That should be fine. Back. There is one other thing. I'm going to try a quick test on something. Because sometimes there's certain elements, the fact that there's language I want to turn off, I do not like blur. I'm not a very big fan of blur when it comes to this. I'll try high and then try trying a few things on, because usually there's like one setting of something, which my graphics card does not sit well with, and I'm forgetting what it is right now. So I'm going to do a test here. I mean, it's fine. Da -da 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 -da. We can roll with it. Let's get to exploring. I like how the train station, even though evidently you would suspect that we came from the train, is just completely abandoned. And of course, try to mess with each of these doors for a second. Now, being me, this game might take me a while because I'm going to be exploring everything, especially when it's so pretty to look at. I also should mention I've actually been on a kick of wintry themed horror games recently. Um, it's because I played a few wintry themed horror games I've enjoyed recently. Is that Mary? Uh, anyways, talking about that, uh, the first example would be that I went through the Penumbra games not too long ago. And those have a wintry Russian setting, I enjoyed that. I also just played Cursed Mountain like a week ago, and I also liked that quite a bit. That is definitely Mary. Now going from there, let's get to exploring. There's a whole village here, but the train tracks seem to go even further. I'm going to explore the village first, because I'm here. But if nothing else, I'll go back there to explore for a little bit. Let's see. There are a lot of shinies around here for certain. The sun's kind of unnaturally bright. I know the sun's bright, but it's not that bright. But yeah, it looks very nice. <clears throat> Let's see if I can mess around the door here. We'll run, I guess. Keep ourselves in a nice stance. Now, I'm going to test one thing before we get into this. Is there a big difference between that and Ultra? This is my question. Video advance. Let's try Ultra and see what happens. Changes. Back, back, back. He goes a little bit slower, notably. And the nice needy isn't much. There's probably some option. I need to remember what it is. I, I try and remember what it is. There's one option usually in games that my graphics card does not sit well with. Um, oh, well, I'll just go with high for the moment. Just wanted to check that. I'm going to change it back. There, good. Whatever the case, let's get to exploring. Nice little shanty shant. I'm trying to determine that I know we can't hop over the fence. Actually, we can't jump at all, I just noticed. So, yeah. I... I'm not sure if we're supposed to follow the train tracks to go to the village. I'm going to start off by looking through the village a bit. The town is definitely abandoned, or at least they let their cars be snowed in, which I guess makes sense in the area where there's a lot of snow. In fact, I understand why you want a car in a place like this, but if it's snowy like this all the time, would it even really be worth it? You'd have to be digging out your car like almost all the time. I mean, yes, you do need it. I'm sure they'll get out the, make sure the streets are fine, clear them out every once in a while. Be a pretty consistent job in the snowy territory, though. There is a road to follow. I'm gonna check out the train tracks first. They both might lead to the same place, but I'm curious enough to check it out. Also, we can go right into the forest, or not. Does that mean because I'm running or because I'm going off the screen? We can actually climb up here to the middle area. 
I'm sure they both lead to the same area because we can sort of go to both areas, but yeah. I, why is every fence open just a jar, but not fully there? There goes the way the pretty introduction song. Well, let's explore the train tracks first. That's what I'm first curious about. Yeah, I'm not gonna let me go any further there. Trains are helpful in places like this. Though these can get icy, trains usually do a pretty good job of staying on the rails as long as it's not going too insanely fast up or down slopes in icy territory. They probably reinforce themselves and know all about it, so I don't need to be talking about train stuff with them. It's not like I drive a train or anything, what do I know really? There is a closed off tunnel up ahead, which attracts my attention. No, actually, it's not a tunnel, it's a fucking another train. Huh. Quaint. I'm gonna sort of uh, run on back to the forest here. I'm also going to try and take a solid look up here above, which, yeah, it's a nice snowy field. Running through the forest is going to be my ample opportunity. I'm guessing that we're supposed to follow the road, probably up into the mountains where we're trying to head to right now, but I'm going to be a bit more evasive. This probably links back to the forest trail. Is there a further way to go? There is definitely a further way to go. I don't know. Oh, the music restarted for some reason. I'm going to run back across in a moment just because I want to see if there's anything I missed. I really don't think that there would be, but I'm checking. Also, if you run for too much, your character really starts having difficulty. That's actually fair. I mean, running through snow, have you ever tried it? You get extremely dried mouth and tired faster. Because your body is working harder to make sure that you're being able to stay warm in such conditions. Hard to overexert yourself in a snowy territory. It's also the cold brings sleepiness to people if you get way too cold. And the whole famous hypothermia, don't fall asleep if you are in a snowy place and you start feeling absolutely tired because it's very likely that that might be the last sleep you'll ever get. Or maybe it's the start of an eternal sleep. I guess it depends how you look at it. Yeah. Part of me is tempted to see if I can climb those rocks, but on account that I can't jump, I'm not going to attempt. Let's go straight into the swaying trees here. And yes, I noticed they're swaying ever so slightly. All right, here starts our mountain climbing adventure. I will say this. For some reason, I like the snow. The snow's not very convenient, and I know that makes areas a kind of barren, but also kind of, I don't know how to describe it, a sort of cold, white sheet over everything has a sort of an appeal to me that sounds opposite to what I usually like, because I like color quite a bit, and this obviously is the opposite of being colorful, but I like it for some reason. Maybe it's because it's unusual, it's different from the norm. Maybe it's also because I like the cold more than I like the heat, so... Here's our little frozen trail to follow. I hear something swaying, so maybe there's actually an area we're supposed to enter. The trail seems to lead somewhere through here, but I don't actually see an entrance there. Well, if there's no trail, then let's go through the forest. Actually, the forest is blocked off, so there actually must be a way to get by. Which means it's time to examine and see if I can get a feel for our surrounds. I'm hearing something creaking, so I think it's supposed to attract my attention to something. Is there a gate? Or can I... Right, you can crouch in this game. Which means... You can probably crouch into this if there's a low enough pass. That's not low enough. Are you low enough? I saw something over there. What was that? It's like a bridge or something. Yeah, there's not like a bridge over there. Fortunately, it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to duck under that way. The pathway just kind of leads right here. I hear something creaking. Could be one of the goddamn trees, I guess, but... There's not a tree bridge or anything over it, and if we go to the very end of the way... This isn't like a gate we can just easily bypass, and the area is blocked off by rocks. Hmm. I'm gonna go backwards for a second and let myself catch my breath. Even though I do understand, of course, the complications of running through the snow, he does run out of stamina very, very quickly. 
Is that a pathway? No, it's blocked by a tree. I'm guessing this tree will not let me by. I'm not wrong. Oh, well there it is. The gold foresty trail. This is not intimidating or unwelcoming in any way. What are you talking about? Are you coming to me? So what coming to you? Me? Even though I can see that we're following some sort of... Whatever these are. Where are those? Oh. They're disappearing though. I should probably follow. Does our character have some sort of mystical ability to see things beyond normal perception? Because there is definitely some sort of orange glowing footprints over here. Either implying that I've seen fragments of a past, or for some reason they were highlighted for me for some reason. Sure, I'll look to the gnarled webs. Seems fun. Here we are. Home sweet home. That's also why I shouldn't walk through a gnarled In the end, hut there. The only thing I saw was a flash. Insufferable burning light, the pain ripping apart my body. I felt it tearing out of my soul. Huh. After a while, I was nobody, nothing. The light went out and I vanished into overwhelming darkness. It's actually getting brighter. I opened the end with delight. This is really early in your journey to be giving up on life, really. Scratchable how we ended up here, but hey, we're here or something. Let's explore a bit. Either our character is insane, we go into somebody's memories or something different like that. Of course, we press E. I'll enter. I am right behind you. Go on for quite a trippy trip. Looks like it might be so. Compass was going insane, and at least we have something that looks like a map or resembling a map, which is probably going to be coming to our aid at some point. If the area that we're exploring is actually that big, then oh my. But we'll find out as we go, I guess. Give me my supplies, even though we fell through literally a rabbit hole type situation and up where we were, so there's a lot of questions of reality there. Act one was incredibly short. Have sure. you ever tried to hold on to your humanity? When others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object, which they can bend to their will. When they told you that you were a monster that deserved punishment. No. When you could really not remember your sins. When they took away your loved ones, leaving you to rot in the dark. I don't think many people have had the situation you're talking about. It's in their darkness. Dark and stormy nights. Thankfully, it's no longer blanketed by a sheet of snow, so I should be okay to go to exploring. Press F for survival info. Or F1. Let's see. Running left shift in deep snow is tiring. Adjust the pace to your surrounding conditions so you don't exhaust your organism. Before setting off for a longer journey, rest in the camp and set a goal to set out. You can focus right mouse button on any object to take a better look at it. Line your way with a flashlight, will you become more visible. Observe the environment carefully for better navigation, with the help of the map, M and compass, C. Barely accessible rocky notches may lead to interesting places and shortcuts. To gain access to them, you will sometimes have to squeeze through your left control, low-line obstacles, or jump off them. We have nothing in reports, nothing in their diary, and their logbook is empty. Okay. Dun 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 uh. Put that away for now, I'm guessing J is put away. Yep. So, I guess it's a big open world of a mountain, which means sure I'll go in here. It's my tent. Here's where I am. I think this is the right area we're actually in, which means we can start exploring. So yeah, looks like there's not a lot of places to see. We have a lot of uh, directions written here. 
But you know what? I'm not gonna care about any of that. We got a whole big world to explore. We should set out a destination, go for it. It's like this nation left an house button. Close map E. Looks like a forest. That looks like a lake. These are the mountains. That looks like a special mountain. What if I wanted to go way over here? They want me to go to all these destinations, I guess. Okay, I'll meet your goals. What's 37? 37 north, 62 east. Okay, let's try for that. 37 north, 62 east. Is, I think, where I am. I mess with this. Yeah, looking at 37 north. 62 East is right there. Okay. Actual destination. 7 North, 52 East. 7 North, 52 East. Is there an order I need to go into all this in? Well, you know what? For my first venture, I'm not gonna give a fuck where I'm going. I'm just gonna go fucking explore. I don't actually know if there's any place I'm trying to head to or for. I just kinda wanna explore right now. Let the magic happen, really. So let's do this. Let's get the explorer's trove out of the way. Being the aesthetic gamer, part of the fun is exploring off to unknown whatevers. I don't know if I'll be able to explore everything, but hey, it looks like a big open world uh, sequence. At the moment, since I have no particular destination in mind, I'll just choose a direction and I'll head there. Alright. I'll take this mountain pass over here and see where it leads me. I need to remember our character cannot run very far before he starts really losing his everything. Yeah, there he goes, all the blur. I'd be a bit nervous with giant rock things hanging down like that. I know it's not really just a singular giant rock, but just it looks like it could just tip over and fall down and crush anything beneath it at any moment. Ah, uh, man, it's just me overthinking it really, though. Let's go on our snowy days. Just to say, welcome to the forest. Be a bit wary. There's all sorts of dangers to be f aware of when you are out in the wilderness, especially when you're out in the cold wilderness. I'm not even sure what I really came equipped with. Honestly, you came with very little. You didn't come with supplies, food, anything. I'm just, I'm just saying that his, he seems incredibly unprepared for the journey which he is undertaking right now. this. That's quite a drop. Probably not where we're going to drop for now. For the moment, I'm just going to continue following the trail. I'm not, I don't need to break up my path I'm taking. I'm not really heading towards any specific direction. I'm just kind of exploring for the moment. I guess we could check our map at any point, can't we, with just M? Yep. We got to pull our compass, just like this. Oh, well, sure. Are we the mark on the map? No, we're not the mark on the map. We need to figure out where we are. Alright. It's okay, though. I, I'm not really looking for anything, I guess. And Actually, does our map have the points? Yeah, it has the points marked on. Let's see. I mean, I'm going to mess around with the compass. Alright. Got it. <clears throat> Don't know what path I decided to take, but whatever. I know what path I took in comparison to our camp, so I guess that's all that really matters. Listen to all those groanings of the trees. That those are actually trees, to be honest. Those don't really sound like groaning trees to me. They sound more like mechanical pieces moving, but hey, what do I know, right? I've never been out by myself in the wilderness on a snowy mountain, so who am I to speak? That's, well, not by myself. I have been on a snowy mountain in the wilderness camping and hiking before, but that's a whole other story. We weren't in, like, the I was on places with trails and all, but not in the middle of wherever the fuck we are. So, yeah.
trying to determine if this wind is causing a sound off something or if there is in fact something else going on here. Regardless, we seem to be approaching some point of interest, so I'll take it. Path splits into two here. I'm going down to the crevice first, but I'll remember this one path to actually explain in multiple directions. It's time to be a bit wary. I'm going down the crevice. It's my first decision. I remember which way I came from where I came. This is where my good sense of direction is hopefully going to come into play. The only thing is the world looks like it might be fucking huge, so we have probably a lot to explore. Firstly, is that even anything? No, it's just a rock. From the angle, the text looked a bit more interesting than that. I don't actually think there's anything down here, but I thought, hey, it's a crevice that goes down. Let's start here. Actually, there's another pathway. Alright, well, we continue our adventure. Where is this, is the question. My screen just slightly changed tinted colors. So I think that's a good sign, actually. Pass through the narrow gap, and we're gonna find ourselves in a big open area with giant rock pillars. Those are actually very interesting rock formations. If they are naturally occurring, which I know this is video games, so it doesn't really give a difference, then you have to question how they came out like that. The wolf's hell at night. I'm going to assume we're also not alone in the forest. Generally, you're not alone in the forest. There's a shit ton of animals that live there for good reason. But, yeah. You know, Yeah, my curiosity gets the best of me. I want to explore the middle of this. There's also a red light. Uh, don't make that my destination. It's kind of an obvious destination. Volcanic? Well, this is definitely a point of interest at the very least. Looks like there's markings on it. Probably stepping in is a bad idea. Oh no, it's actually fine. Yeah. I set out the moment I heard about oh, the incident. Reading. I was in the area, so I reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vishai on February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue group. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search region, knew the area very well. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment and set off right away. It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometer and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 meters and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. To be frank, sir, it sounds like you want to deal with something unnatural, so... You see what you want to see and all that, really. So we found our first... I set out the moment oh, no, 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 we're good, we're good, sir. Well, well generally this is not normal. Great balls of fire! Oh, there. oh, that's not what I expected fully to happen, but sure. Continue. Where does that lead me off to? Hopefully, it gave me a decent checkpoint. That was not the outcome I was expecting, I'll be honest. Maybe I should step away from the giant standing up rocks. The great ball of fire that comes. Oh. I guess I'm gonna follow the running light figure. 
Running light figure, wait for me. It's really running there. I guess it wants me to go down here? To be honest, I don't know if this is where I came from. Well... The light figure led this way, though I think this might be where I came from. seem excitable tonight. I guess they've sensed that they have fresh meat in their new den lair. I am pretty sure this is where I was a little bit ago. Like I am 90% sure this is the same place, which means I guess I'm just going to go back up here. Either it looks very, very similar or in fact it's the same place. Yeah, well, let's see if we can cross and make our fortunes take on the path that we just took there. The chat's been surprisingly quiet tonight. They've been talking to somebody. Let's go on up. I'm trying to verge different places, and here we go. I don't know exactly what attacked me when I was just standing there. It looked monstrous, but the thing that ran away did not look monstrous. It just looked like a big old glowing thing. I'm going to continue one of these paths here. I want to run, but really running just tires our character out way too quickly, so... I'm gonna just going to walk past it right now. I'm going to see how far whatever direction I'm going right now it is. Let's use my compass. Well, I got a little bit turned around, but that's fair. I'm just following pathways. I'm not particularly going in any direction. The radio station is obviously a point of interest, but I'm not going to head towards that right now. I guess I'm going to head through here. The way with two tree stumps to differentiate it next to those things. Works for me. In fact, actually, this is probably the middle of the map. If I look at my map, yep. This is the middle of everything. The campfire, I think, is where we started off at. If that's really where we started off at, we've barely made any progress. Like, wow. This is a big area if this is... Yeah, this is huge if this is actually what it is. Well. Uh, let's start exploring. Of course, being Mr. Fucking Aesthetic Gamer, I've been going to be here for a while. I don't even really know where our quote-unquote destination is, but I'm exploring. We're a bit closer. There's obviously a point of interest. A big glowy mountain. Sure, I'll head towards the big glowy mountain. This mountain point is obviously going to be a point of interest, so yeah. Yeah, this is basically. That was what it was called. The Dilatov Pass incident. There are a few slight differences to it, but it's obviously inspired by that. Something or another is crunching rocks over there, and I'd rather not meet the Molemen tonight, so I'm gonna head over this way. The radio tower seems like such an obvious point that I don't want to make it the first place I go to. Still, I'll see if I can climb up this mountain at all. There is definitely a glowy point over there, which maybe we can find a way to get to. Sort of skim the pathway and see if I find anything. The sounds in this game are both good, but also a bit bizarre. They don't feel like they fit with the area of where I am to me. So I'm not sure if I like them or dislike them at this point in time. Well... I mean, the wolf howls work, but like... Some of the specific sounds... Let me go back up here. Maybe I should investigate what's making this sound. Oh yeah, there's something here. I should investigate these odd sounds. Got it. Let's listen. Now listen, I'm actually going to have to read this one. 
Mysterious lights above the Zivondvi Cosmodrome. Mysterious events in the sky were noted during the night of 4th to 5th of July. Witnesses testified they had seen a bright orange sphere which had crossed the sky above the city several times, moving chaotically and immediately changing its direction of flight. Finally, it stopped and disappeared. Major Garica, an aviation professional, confirms it is impossible for any soft flying object we know to move like that. Military and Cosmodrome's personnel answered our questions in a short and firm way by distancing themselves from the event, informing there was no activity in the area as well as there were no tests performed. Well, yeah. I... So, if there's odd sounds like that, I should investigate in the future. I'll keep that in mind. Because I guess that's to inform me that there is a page nearby, or something nearby. Happened sort of last time as well, so it's a kind of consistent thing it actually seems like, so yeah. I... Back into the forest. If I end up at the radio tower, end up at the radio tower, my goal is actually get to that glowing yellow mountain right now. And of course, explore along the way. Unfortunately, I feel like I am eventually going to lose my sense of direction, because I'm not going in a systematic way or anything.